the keynote speech of uh, uh, academician Dan Tufish. It is my pleasure to present you academician professor Dan Tufish. He is uh, one of the pioneers of intelligence in Romania in natural language processing. Uh, it is my pleasure we know for many, many years. And uh, he is also the director of the Research Institute of Artificial Intelligence of the Romanian Academy of Science uh, Has a lot of research in uh, natural language processing, especially for Romanian natural language processing. Uh, also developed many resources corpora and uh, instruments for uh, natural language processing, many European projects, international projects. So I think uh, he has a very, very rich activity. So it's my pleasure to, to let the floor to, to Academician Dr. Fischer, please. Thank you, Stefan, for the nice uh, presentation. Welcome. Uh, so we know each other for almost 40 years now. And um, I uh, very much appreciate our uh, knowledge and our friendship, I would say. Yeah. Okay, let me uh, tell you some things about uh, data and uh, language-centric AI which is um, a label uh, recently uh, created. And um, uh, everybody knows that learning language models, uh, it's uh, a very tough uh, job because the subtleties of human languages are difficult to learn even for children and non-native speakers. And uh, this is why uh, the current uh, AI addresses language as uh, the ultimate research frontier. Uh, the huge advancement on AI and processing human languages achieved in the last uh, 15, 20 years, uh, mainly based on uh, uh, data-driven uh, models. But uh, now uh, we are witnessing um, move from uh, performing very well on single tasks towards excelling on multi uh, on joint multi tasks such as question answering uh, machine translation summarization nature language inference sentiment analysis and so on and so on and um, the most advanced language centered ai systems are based on models that learn and process different tasks without any specific uh, modules. Uh, they are uh, said to have uh, zero shot learning capabilities. Uh, Dan, excuse me. Uh, yes. Uh, I mutat slide, but I can make them our slide. Oh, sorry. Uh, so it's only the first slide also for more. Maybe you yeah, yeah. Do you see click on a click on a, on a maybe the bottom? No, or maybe it's better to share your screen now that I can share it to the PowerPoint and unfortunately the slides are not moving. It's only the first slide that being flagged. Share screen. So maybe 
Uh, and share and then share screen. Uh, okay, now uh, you need to pop the replay so in the left corner after you've got replay setting. And sorry, uh, in the left corner, so in yes. the left corner, you have display setting. Uh, on the right, yeah, you've got there and just select pop uh, replay. Exactly. Uh, pop is better. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, Duplicate slides show. Oh, uh, no. Swap presenter view and cipher. Okay. Yeah, that one. Because now we, we see them. Okay. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Uh, now we now see perfectly perfect. your slide. Thank you. Uh, so you see my slide now? Yes. Now it's perfect. Now it's perfect. Okay. Um, I told you uh, just be before that uh, the advancements of uh, technologies and uh, knowledge uh, allowed a transfer from a single task to multi uh, joint tasks. And um, uh, we learn more and more and every day uh, of uh, new language models essentially transform our sequence models with uh, million or even hundreds of billion parameters are able to serve uh, multitask applications. And uh, I don't know if you learned about uh, Gato, the recent uh, generalist uh, agent, uh, launched by uh, DeepMind, which uh, was trained on uh, 604 distinct tasks. And uh, 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 these tasks are uh, um, using uh, different uh, uh, modalities. And um, this is a, a paper described in uh, archives uh, 19 May this year. And uh, the GATO neural models uh, uses uh, 24 layers on embedding side, size of uh, 2000. Uh, um, and the uh, post attention feed forward size of 8,196, having 1.2 billion parameters. And uh, the fuel for these models is huge volumes of data. Well, data became uh, extremely important. Uh, because it is uh, considered to be uh, lifeblood of economic development, uh, a basis for many new products and services, uh, driving pro productivity and uh, resource efficiency gains across all uh, aspects of uh, economy. And um, it allows uh, for uh, producing, pro for releasing more personalized products and services. And uh, uh, this uh, view is uh, adopted by uh, European uh, uh, Commission and uh, European Union. And uh, according to their vision, they uh, anticipate a creation of a single European data space and the uh, creation of an, an attractive multilingual policy environment. So definitely uh, you heard the slogan that more data is better data, but uh, sometimes uh, required data is hard to find. 
and uh, data is needed in large quantities, the more the better. But recently, um, it was um, adopted a new slogan, cleaner data is even better. Uh, well, uh, I've been uh, frequently asked how much data is enough data? Well, this is uh, hard to tell. Usually we try it out and train with what is there. Uh, we evaluate the model. There are various evaluation ways. One is a similarity measure, adopting a similarity measure uh, that uh, indicates uh, closeness to the, uh, to the um, uh, gold standard, if you have it. And uh, also uh, there is a recent uh, uh, criticism of uh, deep learning methodology uh, because uh, uh, the criticists uh, um, consider that it's, uh, uh, these models are based on highly over-parameterized models with many more than n parameters to learn from n training data points as we uh, know from uh, uh, elementary algebra. But uh, it was uh, recently published on uh, archive, a recent paper uh, by uh, Bubek and, uh, and uh, Selke, which is uh, called a universal law of robustness via isoperimetry. Uh, and uh, in uh, this uh, paper, they claim that the overparameterization is a necessity rather than a weakness of the framework uh, because finding a smooth function to fit a, a D dimensional data requires and uh, they uh, demonstrate this uh, sentence, uh, requires at least n d parameters with uh, the n over parameterization. Well, scaling the neural, uh, neural language model is not uh, enough, it's considered by very recent papers. And uh, I uh, mentioned here uh, DARPA uh, report from 1st of June this year. Uh, they say uh, that the prevailing trend in industrial machine learning research is towards uh, scaling up to giga and Terra scale models as a means to improve the accuracy and performance. But they consider that these trends are not sustainable because of the extremely high computational and data needs for training such models, uh, as well as uh, invoking scaling laws. Um, you might uh, have heard about uh, uh, ecologist in uh, data science, uh, making uh, some uh, uh, scary comparison uh, between uh, uh, generating a language model like this one uh, and uh, a flight, for instance, a flight uh, over uh, ocean of a big uh, plane or uh, a lifetime um, car uh, emissions and so on. 
And um, uh, these are real concerns. Um, and uh, another opinion I would like to, to uh, bring here is uh, uh, from uh, Andrew and G, uh, one of the leaders in uh, uh, neural language models, uh, which uh, uh, who who said that uh, in the last decades the big biggest shift in AI was a shift to deep learning. That's true. I think uh, said uh, Angie, uh, it's quite possible that this decade the biggest shift will be to data-centric AI. I think the focus has to shift from big data to good data. So creation of uh, language data is really, uh, really very important. So what is necessary um, according to uh, most uh, recent uh, uh, forecasts is that one, uh, uh, the, the research community should think about hybrid architectures that could be seeded with prior knowledge, acquire both statistical and symbolic knowledge through learning and adapt uh, learned representation to uh, their needs. Well, um, um, European uh, Commission uh, launched large initiatives for language resources, uh, which uh, uh, because the importance of data has been recognized uh, by EC more than 20 years ago. And uh, EC funded many large projects for data collecting, curation, and improved tools for data-based learning and problem solving. And uh, I mentioned in this slide some uh, uh, reference uh, European Commission funded projects. Uh, some uh, some of you may have heard about MetaNet, um, Cracker, MetaShare, MetaResearch, Clarin, FlareNet, Accurat, ELRC, ELG, ELE, and uh, several others. I refer here only to projects uh, meant to to support data collection and uh, cleaning. In uh, 2012, MetaNet, uh, the MetaNet project made an impressive analysis of the state of play for uh, 30 European languages. Um, uh, this analysis is uh, known uh, by the white language papers concerning their technological level levels. And uh, this uh, study was uh, published by uh, Springer in uh, 2012. And uh, uh, the reports outlined that there were tremendous deficits in uh, technology support and significant research gaps for each language. And uh, they released a press uh, uh, announcement uh, with a scary uh, title, at least 20 European languages in danger of digital extinction. And uh, this press release was uh, uh, promoted by um, press agencies uh, all over the world. Um, and uh, here is uh, 
a show uh, with um, the Romanian uh, white paper. Uh, this set uh, contain uh, 32 volumes covering uh, 31 European languages. Well, 10 years after the Metanet terrible warning, many improvements have been achieved, uh, yet uh, the 24 official European languages, although have the same status, they don't have the same technological level. And uh, based on a state-of-the-art uh, report uh, uh, published by the community, uh, European Parliament resolution in 2008 called language equality in the digital age was adopted with a large majority, 592 yes, and only 45 no. And uh, as a result of this uh, uh, activities, uh, promoting uh, language technologies, um, new large initiatives were launched by uh, European Commission and uh, uh, I mentioned here European language resource coordination, European language grid, and European language equality, plus several others. Um, and um, uh, it is uh, the, the aimed uh, goal of uh, these initiatives uh, is towards uh, digital language equality, which is the state was defined as the state of affairs in which all languages have the same technological support and situational context necessary for them to continue to exist and to prosper as living languages. In, digi in the digital age. And for uh, reaching these objectives, European uh, Union proposed a budget of 9.2 billion euros for the period 2021-2027. Uh, uh, well, I mentioned uh, this uh, uh, large uh, projects. Uh, I will tell you a few things about uh, them. Uh, you find a lot of information on on their websites. European Language Grid is a joint technology platform for the whole. European language community, technology community, which uh, is um, approximated to uh, 1800 organizations. Language technology community is represented by national competence centers, 32. Um, and uh, um, this uh, grid uh, has been uh, conceived as a marketplace for the whole European language technology community. It uh, addresses different type, types of users, data consumers, service consumers, uh, data providers, language technology providers, and uh, each uh, of these uh, type of user finds uh, interesting information on, uh, on the site. The main objectives um, of European Language Grid is to establish 
the primary language technology uh, platform and marketplace in Europe. There is no such thing nowadays. And uh, to tackle the fragmentation of the European language technology landscape, uh, it is uh, dedicated to commercial and non-commercial and uh, industry-related uh, uh, activities. Um, well, it is uh, thought that um, European language grid uh, will unleash enormous potential for innovation. Well, the next step, uh, ELG uh, project, uh, which uh, started uh, in uh, 2019, will uh, end uh, tomorrow, but uh, as uh, ELG is a long-term initiative, they thought about uh, next steps. They continue with the uh, validation of quality of uh, ELG products. Uh, they would uh, attach more data repositories uh, it's a plan to include the uh, ELG in relevant infrastructures um, and continue to raise awareness of language technology for Europe and influence policy making. <coughs> Sorry. Um, and uh, there will be a new release of ELG 3. Um, and uh, now let me tell you a few words about European Language Equality, which is a sister project of ELG. Um, the ELE is not about implementation or research. Uh, it's a preparation project to develop a convincing agenda and roadmap, bringing on board as many uh, stakeholders, relevant stakeholders. Um, the agenda should lay out the current state of language technology and language equality within the Europe, uh, uh, European Union and give a detailed picture of the de uh, desired situation needed to uh, achieve digital language equality. Um, and the roadmap will then provide the path and means needed to implement the agenda. Well, um, the current uh, ELE project, which also ended tomorrow, uh, provided all these uh, specifications, the agenda and roadmap, and laid the foundation for subsequent large scale ELE uh, 2 program, which will be uh, launching uh, 1st of July this year. So ELE uh, initiative uh, has uh, 53 partners supporting it. Um, they are coming from all European countries uh, and uh, uh, Official and uh, other languages uh, are uh, uh, taken into account. Um, as I uh, mentioned already, it was in close 
collaboration with the sister project ELG and um, um, continuing MetaNet or updating MetaNet uh, white paper volumes. Uh, there will be uh, research uh, reports, more than uh, 66 language reports, uh, totaling over 2,200 pages. And um, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's uh, significant to, to say that out of these reports, a uh, book will be published by Springer uh, containing 46 chapters and more than 400, 450 pages. Uh, the number of languages taken into account in ELE uh, is 77. So uh, not only the official EU languages. Um, well, uh, maybe it's important to, to uh, tell you that uh, ELE2 will launch uh, by the end of September, an open call for small targeted projects uh, with two or three uh, months duration and decision on fund funding is expected to, uh, in November, so will be a short uh, time for evaluation. And there will be funded eight to 12 projects in line with the uh, ELE uh, strategic research agenda and the roadmap. Well, what we do uh, in order to, to get aligned with the priorities of uh, this uh, uh, analysis, uh, these reports and this state of arts reports. Well, we um, develop large language resources and uh, we develop the state of the art uh, technologies for uh, processing uh, these uh, language resources. Um, the language resources are developed in a standardized, reusable form. Um, uh, also, we uh, develop neural language models, but like uh, uh, we work on um, applications, various applications, mediated by language, uh, Romanian, um, question answering, machine translation, information extraction, chatbot. And um, we are in um, very good contacts with uh, language technology infrastructures. And uh, these are some of uh, language infrastructures uh, we are uh, part of. And um, well, you might find uh, more details in, uh, in a recent paper I published, uh, Romanian language technology a view from an academic uh, perspective. Um, well, so out of the previously mentioned uh, platforms, I would uh, like to tell you uh, some words about Relate, which is the portal for Romanian technologies and data sets. And uh, this uh, portal includes technologies and language resources developed by our institute and its partners in uh, several projects uh, mentioned here. Corolla, Reterom, Robin, Presidency, 
Marcel and Curly Cut, the last three are European projects. Uh, it is aligned with the development philosophy of uh, European language grid that is uh, relies on web services with uh, REST uh, APIs uh, using uh, Dockering uh, technology. And uh, all these uh, services may be distributed on multiple network nodes. And uh, moreover, they can be consumed directly from the partners if they don't uh, want to deposit on uh, Relate uh, portal. It is a robust infrastructure allowing for both uh, CPU and GPU processing. Uh, it was uh, used for uh, processing, deep processing of large and very large corpora, more than 200,000, 250,000 uh, documents uh, in, uh, in our international uh, running projects. And uh, it is open source. It can be downloaded from the GitHub of uh, our institute. Um, yes. Okay. Uh, this is shown the relate interface in the left uh, uh, side of the image, you, you see uh, services um, and uh, in the uh, central part is uh, uh, shown uh, one of the uh, visualization uh, uh, methods for analysis for data analysis and for data processing. Um, from uh, Relate uh, uh, has a, a functional um, architecture uh, made of uh, web front end and uh, web back end. So the difference uh, is uh, that the front end, uh, which is uh, uh, freely accessible, no credentials to access it, uh, it offers full set of 18, uh, for now, processing modules for text and speech data uh, and uh, various uh, visualizations uh, modes for single document only. While uh, the web uh, backend, uh, which is also free, but uh, requires um, authentication. Uh, and after uh, authenticated uh, user, he receives uh, the access uh, credentials. And uh, in the back end, uh, you have um, uh, a lot of uh, facilities for corpora management, that is creation, uh, uploading, downloading, uh, archiving, uh, annotating, uh, extracting uh, statistics, uh, visualize uh, in a different format, and also uh, uh, converting uh, data uh, between uh, uh, one uh, format to another one. And uh, the available uh, formats are Conal U, Conal U Plus, XML, JSON, and RDF. It also uh, allows for creation of gold corpora because it integrates uh, BRAT, the uh, famous uh, tool for uh, name entity recognition 
also a speech recorder for uh, align the corpora speech and text. And um, also here in the back end, uh, you can find uh, large pre-trained language models, um, metadata management statistics, and uh, what is um, uh, important. Uh, here you can uh, launch uh, uh, parallel processing by uh, uh, scheduling uh, several tasks and uh, uh, using the services from multiple nodes. Uh, well, uh, these are uh, all the services. Um, you can uh, be served by Relate uh, platform. And um, concerning uh, large language models for Romanian available on Relate, uh, I should uh, specify that uh, these yeah. language models are uh, available on Relate, but not. Uh, these are not uh, the only uh, language models uh, for Romanian available in. Uh, in uh, our country, um, there is uh, also at Polytechnic University uh, a language model like this. Uh, uh, Robert, um, there are two models available uh, with the case. Uh, case text and uncase text. And uh, a nice uh, resource is uh, the, the Romanian dis distilled bird, which uh, was uh, constructed based on the bird based Romanian case. Uh, V1 uh, is smaller, faster, and almost as uh, accurate in uh, performance. Um, and um, I should also uh, mention uh, the, the word embeddings uh, generated from the Corolla project. Uh, they are very clean and uh, we uh, evaluated them against other word embeddings for Romanian generated by uh, for instance, from uh, uh, Wikipedia, uh, and uh, they uh, showed much better performance. Well, uh, there are annotation models for lemmatization, uh, universal uh, path of speech tagging, uh, extended path of speech tagging, and dependency parsing. Um, and uh, these dependency parsing models were trained on um, our UD uh, uh, tree bank. There are also classification models there. And uh, these are uh, snapshots from uh, um, GitHub, for our GitHub. Um, and uh, you are uh, uh, invited to browse it and to download whatever you you might be interested. And um, <clears throat> um, as I previously said, uh, we uh, also uh, developed major resources. Uh, a Romanian WordNet, which uh, contains more than uh, 60,000 synsets. Uh, this is aligned with Princeton WordNet for English, and uh, thus uh, with other WordNets 
aligned to, to Princeton Warnet. Uh, and uh, uh, this has been used in most of our uh, natural language processing uh, projects. I mentioned already uh, the name of Corolla. This is uh, an acronym for uh, Corpus of Romanian Language, Contemporary Romanian Language. Uh, it was a priority project of the Romanian Academy with uh, um, partners uh, from uh, Institute of Computer Science in Yash, uh, University of Bucharest, and the uh, Institute for German Language in Mannheim, and obviously with text providers because uh, Corolla contains very clean uh, language wise uh, data. So it has uh, more than uh, one point billion words. It's, uh, it contains uh, both uh, written and spoken uh, data. And uh, there are several annotation levels. Um, all the documents included into Corolla have attached uh, metadata, detailed metadata, um, and um, it can be uh, exploited uh, via CORAP, which is uh, the uh, interface, very powerful interface developed by the Institute of, for the German Languages. And uh, OCQP uh, for oral component. And um, also may uh, be interesting uh, word embeddings I already mentioned for the down downstream applications. But uh, we developed some other corpora uh, and here is uh, the oral corpor, corpus uh, Robin Tusk uh, developed during uh, the Robin project. There are several uh, corpora uh, constructed for uh, name entity recognition uh, training and evaluation. Um, it's uh, legal narrow. This uh, corpus is uh, uh, contains information in legal area. Simon Simon narrow. Uh, it's a corpus uh, containing uh, annotated uh, name entity uh, from uh, medical domain, and uh, Marcel. Uh, um, also used for uh, building, uh, uh, for building uh, uh, NER training uh, data. Well, recently we added uh, micro blogging corpus, which can be used uh, for sentiment analysis, hate speech, uh, um, we also um, developed, uh, extracted, constructed uh, embeddings from uh, this uh, uh, pretty large uh, micro, uh, my, micro blogging corpus. And uh, all of them uh, are uh, annotated. On multiple layers, lexical, morphologic, syntactic, and uh, phonetic, uh, especially <coughs> oral um, uh, data. And uh, it was uh, exploited in various tasks, or will be 
uh, exploited in various tasks, anonymization, for instance, uh, curly cut running project uh, requires uh, anonymization um, and also machine translation and so on. Well, access is free for all tools and most of the resources. Uh, the only, the only uh, exception to this uh, free access is uh, Corolla because uh, we have some uh, restrictions from uh, uh, text providers. And uh, metadata for our tools so data um, are available in major European language technology hubs, MetaShare, European Language Grid, Linked Open Data Cloud, uh, and uh, in uh, doing it, we adhere to standard representation, representations and uh, data fairness uh, principles. Uh, that is uh, to make it uh, findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. And uh, this is uh, all I wanted to, to tell you. Thank you for your attention. And uh, I would be happy to answer your questions. Thank you very much for your uh, very interesting presentation. Uh, in fact, uh, language is now uh, very important in uh, natural language processing in uh, learning, in uh, intelligent computing systems. There are many applications for this for collaborative learning, analyzing of charts, analyzing of uh, sales and so on and so on. So yeah. thank you. And uh, please, if you have questions, yes, please. Yes, uh, thank you for your presentation. Um, I have, in fact, multiple questions. <laughs> <laughs> you presented uh, several systems. I have several questions. The first one is ethics consideration. Uh, in Canada, we, we attach a very uh, large importance to uh, confidentiality of data. And I don't know, but I, I, I can detect that accessing the system you mentioned, uh, preference, uh, uh, conduct to uh, lead to uh, some confidential data. So for ethics consideration, how the systems are protected? Uh, thank you for the question. Um... Uh, we developed uh, uh, anonymization uh, uh, software uh, and uh, also there is a European project that uh, developed uh, uh, tools for um, anonymization. Uh, one of these uh, is called MAPA. Uh, but uh, we prefer to, to use our uh, our uh, systems to anonymize uh, whatever uh, name entities uh, recognized uh, by name entity recognition software. Uh, so this is uh, um, quite uh, flexible and uh, uh, you can uh, uh, define the um, uh, name entity categories. Um, and uh, then uh, after uh, training on uh, the new uh, name entity categories, uh, it can be used to, uh, to anonymize um, the data, the text, uh, which uh, will uh, we uh, provide uh, openly, and um, as you might know, there are different strategies for anonymization. Um, one uh, which is uh, um, uh, 
considering uh, uh, anonymization, uh, replacement of uh, name entity category, all all over the its occurrences in all uh, documents with the same uh, symbol, or uh, it's uh, uh, the symbol symbols uh, replacing uh, uh, identified uh, entities uh, are uh, local to one uh, uh, specific document. So uh, this this uh, approach we we follow this approach because uh, we consider it uh, to be safer because uh, if you find uh, many documents with the same uh, uh, code for uh, name entity uh, object, uh, you might draw some, some uh, 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 inferences and uh, identify uh, the person. So uh, to answer your question, uh, we use anonymization uh, for all the required uh, categories. For instance, in, uh, in our um, uh, dialogue with um, uh, uh, text providers, some uh, uh, publishing houses uh, asked us to anonymize the translator if the uh, text was a translation, uh, because this information was uh, available in, uh, in, uh, in metadata, and we decided to, to satisfy the, this requirement. Yeah. Okay, okay, second question, if I can. Uh, yes. Uh, among the project you cited, uh, are there connection with two main main players in uh, data processing, uh, who are, which are uh, Google and Facebook, are the among the project are they connected to Facebook and and the Google systems? Um, well, that's a very tricky uh, question uh, because. Um, uh this uh, large company companies uh, which i called the masters of the uh, of the internet uh, they uh, uh, develop their own uh, uh, resources and tools uh, some of them are public and uh, uh, they are uh, not always um, better than uh, tools for uh, for uh, specific languages as compared to uh, uh, tools developed by the native speakers. Um, so one uh, uh, interesting um, example is uh, uh, the following. Some years ago, uh, we uh, bought uh, a corp, large corpus, uh, uh, 1.5 tera uh, bytes corpus from uh, Google. And uh, uh, this uh, this corpus uh, contained uh, uh, data for uh, multiple languages. Uh, if I remember correctly, uh, ten languages, Romanian included. Uh, and uh, we extracted the Romanian uh, data and apply um, our. Uh, tools for identifying uh, 
dirty data, bad data, and uh, we remove we removed uh, something like uh, thirty five percent of of uh, this uh, corpus, and uh, uh, we asked for permission to to distribute the newest uh, corpus and uh, it was not allowed uh, the new distribution and and i think that uh, uh, whenever um, their tools i mean masters of the uh, internet uh, whenever their tools are um, uh, or resources are uh, provided uh, freely for the research community, uh, the actual uh, practice is to compare with the, uh, to compare your uh, tools or uh, your uh, data uh, with what is uh, available. And uh, um, if uh, your data is not uh, better or your tools uh, not <clears throat> uh, uh, best, uh, the, the tools uh, which are released free by this, you have no chance to promote your uh, deliverables and uh, to be uh, more in line with your question is um, custom customary to compare with public uh, data and public uh, performance uh, uh, performance of public tools okay thank you well, other questions, comments? Okay, if not, thank you again for the very interesting presentation.